This is George from High Tech Legion. You know, sometimes it really does seem like it's another day, another dollar, and another Intel chipset and socket. Uh, today, we're going to take a look at a board that belongs to the new Z97 chipset from Intel. Uh, one of the exciting things about this chipset is the fact that it's not bringing a new socket, but it does have support for Intel's upcoming fifth generation core processor. So you're gonna see um, an upgrade in the processors without having to change boards again. So great news there. Also, nice thing we're seeing is that manufacturers are taking this opportunity to really tweak their boards and make improvements on the Z87 chipset uh, wherever they felt necessary. Now, the Z97 is not supposed to be a performance upgrade. The real big story here is uh, M2, set, um, M2 SATA as well as SATA Express, which offer 10G speed since we've been seeing the uh, SATA channel get flooded by high-end drives. So that's going to bring up a new opportunity for storage. Today we're going to take a look at a board that is made for the overclocker from MSI, the Z97 M-Power Max AC. For those of you unfamiliar, MSI does uh, make three lines of boards. They make a mainstream board, a gaming board, and an overclocking board. The Max AC that we're looking at here, the M-Power, is in the gaming series, full-size ATX board, with the Max AC designating the fact that it does have uh, built-in Wi-Fi as well as Bluetooth. Now, also color schemes change on the boards. The gaming boards with a black and red scheme, the overclocking boards with the black and bright yellow, as you see here on the M-Power. Now, let's just take a quick look at the back of the box. Just a quick look at uh, a couple of the features we see here. Uh, they're touting higher performance, obviously, over Z97, other Z97 chipset boards. Hybrid PWM cooling does actually have uh, water cooling for the um, PWM built right onto the board. Better power stability, as you see here. Intel uh, Wi-Fi AC module, CPU fourth and fifth generation supported. So like I say, that's really a great feature right there. So when Broadwell comes out, you're not gonna have to upgrade your motherboard. You can go into a Haswell now, or if you have a Haswell, wanna upgrade your motherboard, great time to do it. And you can go right into Broadwell. Chipset Z97, memory supported 32 gigabytes um, of DDR3, 3200 is supported. Intel Gigabit LAN built right on board. A channel audio uh, 7.1 built right on board, HD audio. Uses the Realtek 1150 chip. Uh, very nice job done here, as we'll see on the board itself. Video 3 uh, PCI Express 16s, as well as uh, integrated graphics usable. Wireless um, uses Wi-Fi A, B, G, N, as well as AC, and does support dual band wireless, as well as Bluetooth 4.0. Peripheral interfaces, you've got six uh, SATA, six gigabyte per second, two uh, uh, more SATA, six Gs off an S Media 1061 chip, as well as six USB 2s and 12, a total of 12 USB 3.0s. So you've got some very good connectivity options here as well. Expansion capabilities, four PCI Express 1s, uh, as well as the one SATA M2, which can also be uh, used for SATA Express with a converter, which is not included. Form factor is ATX. And you get a quick look at the back of the uh, IO plate, just with some labels on it right there. So nice packaging all around. And also, uh, as you can see, you've got some very nice features going on here from MSI as well. Looking at how these features actually play out on the board itself. First off, it is an eight layer PCB, uh, all black, as you see with the yellow trim. A uh, really nice PCB itself, very, very solid, very nicely put together. Um, absolutely no mess, no clutter, really well laid out. Now, first, let's take a look at the CPU socket. Uh, typically not something we really look at it, but this is an overclocking board and MSI did a couple of really interesting things here. First off, you've got the liquid cooling, as I said, uh, built right in. You got two three-eighths inch barbs built right into the heat sinks. So you, it's actually hybrid cooling. You can run it simply as air, or you can add liquid to it, throw it right into your loop using the uh, included barbs. Next off, when you look at the keep out zone, as you can see, it's actually about 1.5 centimeters larger than standard. Also, they use uh, very short high C caps, as you see here. So that's gonna actually aid in a couple of uh, respects here. First off, with short caps and um, 
the larger area, it's going to make it much easier for extreme overclockers to insulate the board. Now, for those using large air coolers, obviously more space, all the better, a lot more to work with, a lot easier to work with. So you've got um, a really nice setup right here, whether you're going to be doing air cooling or whether you're going to be doing any extreme overclocking. So uh, like we say, this is an overclocking board and MSI definitely took this into, an, into account when they laid this out. Up on the front corner of the board, you see a series of buttons uh, right down here, as well as a strip right above the uh, power input. Now, first off, as you look at this, you've got your overclocking genie with a dip switch next to it. The OC genie is a one-click uh, overclock, and the switch next to it, it allows you to select gear one or gear two. With the one-click, uh, typically gear one will take you up to about four gigahertz. Um, on your overclock, gear two, anywhere from 4.3 to 4.5. Uh, and we're, of course, we're talking with a K-series Haswell chip. Um, so you've got the one-click overclocking, two gears right there. Power on and off, reset button right on the board. Uh, right here, you've actually got a cap discharge, very important, obviously, for uh, extreme overclocking in the LN2. And right above that, you've actually got a B-clock up and down. So you can actually adjust the B-clock. Now, uh, one of the interesting things here, the OC engine on the... Um, Empower Max AC actually has uh, more flexible B clock adjustments with larger stepping, 100, 125, and 167. So you do have a bit higher range uh, and a little bit easier uh, adjustments on the B clocks. So you've actually got quite a bit here to work with just off of buttons on the motherboard itself. Now, right in front of here, um, you've actually got sensors for all of your voltages. You've got three grounds, so you can hook up three meters simultaneously, get your VCCI, DDR, core, graphics, ring voltages right directly here, and actually um, measure them manually with a meter so you're not going to have any software interference and you're going to get correct readings. So you've actually got a lot going on in a very small area right up in the top front of the board. Moving down to touch on the board, find eight SATA connectors right here and two USB uh, 3.0 headers right here. Now, of course, um, being an MSI overclocking board, it's using all military class four components, high C caps, um, super uh, ferrite chokes, as well as dark caps. But uh, MSI has really gone a step further here. And it's first uh, noticed with the USBs. What you wind up with on the USBs, first off, you've got double ESD protection. So you've actually got ESD protection on every I.O. on the board, um, be it on the uh, board itself or on the rear I.O. plate. And you can actually see the... Um, ESD protective ICs right above the header itself. Now, also on the USB 3s, they actually use redrivers. So you're not limited to the length of the cable as much. Uh, you won't lose voltage or signal using a longer cable. So it does allow you to use a bit longer cables on the USB 3 without a worry. Uh, of course, it's got the power here and the four RAM slots here. It does use a dual clip on each RAM stick. And moving down over in the corner, you've got your digital uh, readout for post uh, issues right here. So more going on here and moving down to the bottom. USB 2 headers, system fan, system 1 uh, fan headers right here. And of course, your PCI Express moving uh, right down from the C uh, the uh, CPU slot, as well as a PCI Express power connection right on top of them. Now looking closely, you can see that the SATA M2 connector is actually nestled right here, and any SATA M2 uh, would actually come out between the two PCI Express slots and with a tie down right here, as you can see. So it would lay right there. Now, as I say, you can also use uh, SATA Express uh, with the adapter. Once again, the adapter would come right out here and lay down right here with the tie down right there. So you can go that way as well. Depending on what you're doing though, uh, as far as GPU configurations, uh, you do need to figure out if that is going to be a hindrance or is going to be in the way. So now moving from there uh, over to the left, you see here we have the audio se uh, section of the board. And if you take a look very closely, you can see that the uh, audio section is actually separated completely from the rest of the board. Uh, so complete EMI shielding, all Japanese capacitor, uh, Japanese audio capacitors, as well as the uh, Realtek 1150, as I said. Uh, sometimes that uh, the Realtek gets um, kind of a bad rap, but it's actually a very, very good audio solution if it's implemented correctly, which it is here with 
the uh, proper components around it. It is 7.1 HD, as we say, so you do have full surround sound right off of there. Right above there, your Nuviton um, sensor. So that is what's going to tell uh, everything in your software and translate what uh, the board is seeing to the software as far as temperatures and fan speeds and whatnot. Finally, moving over to the I.O., uh, you've actually got a PS2 header included, as well as two uh, USB 2.0s, and you've got a total of eight USB 3s, HDMI, DisplayPort, and your audio as well, 7.1, uh, as we just said. Right here is a clear CMOS button. Now, you did hear me mention the uh, wireless, and you don't see it here because it's actually shipped as a separate module, which has to be installed and actually goes right down plugs in and is screwed down right here, so you do have your wireless uh, output right there. Now, of course, like I say, that is an Intel Gigabit LAN, so everything's very well laid out on the rear. I mean, you know, very simple. I do love actually seeing eight of the uh, USB 3.0 slots uh, on the rear. Getting a look at the accessories, obviously, Wi-Fi card, and you've got your driver CDs, your outbuying LN2 door hanger, MSI sticker, the screw down for the Wi-Fi, quick installation guide, cable labels, MSI poster, overclocking guide, user guide, and the big overclocking motherboard user guide, uh, software and application user guide right here. So actually you do have quite a bit of documentation because it is actually a very complex motherboard as we'll see when we get into the software. Moving on, SLI bridge, rear IO plate, very nice padded on the back and all black now with yellow. So very good looking as well. Front panel, uh, you've actually got an extension header, so you can actually plug everything in and then just plug in the one header. Total of six, um, very, very rudimentary SATA cables. You probably want to buy some uh, aftermarkets. And Wi-Fi antennas. As you can see, actually very nice Wi-Fi antenna. Um, you know, if you've seen some of the antennas that come with some of the other cards, obviously, you've got a really nice piece here compared to usually what's a mini antenna that you see coming with a motherboard. Moving on from there, these are the V-Check point cables. These actually plug into the V-Check points and then give you a lead to uh, use your multimeter with. Uh, if you've ever tried using the solder points on a lot of the other motherboards or tried, you know, getting a multimeter onto those solder points. This is a really welcome uh, piece of equipment right here, the V-Check itself, which can be pretty easily used without these, but especially with the cables, fantastic to use. And finally, you've actually got uh, an, e or, um, an eSATA riser with power. So, and all, all the cables you need to use with it actually for the power plug-in, obviously, um, for the power and the SATA itself as well as the eSATA uh, SATA cable included. So you have a complete eSATA setup for the board, uh, but it is not attached to the board, it's actually optional. So you've got a great list of accessories here. So we've gotten to look at the overall layout of the board, as well as the build quality. And you know, I have to tell you, it's really, really impressive in all aspects. I mean, the features are phenomenal, uh, as well as the build quality. It's really, really nicely put together, very, very sturdy. And obviously there's no arguing with the features. MSI just did a lot right here. So now we're gonna throw it in the case and we're gonna see if it uh, performs as well as it's put together. It's important to keep in mind that Z97 was never touted as being a performance upgrade over Z87. So as you're looking at the benchmark, it's gonna look very familiar, uh, exactly the same as Z87 in terms of performance. Really the important thing we wanna look at here is the fact that there was no area where the MSI Mpower Max lagged at all. It was top tier in absolutely every area.
throughout installation testing, you know, the Empower Max has really been phenomenal to work with. All the features were absolutely top notch. I mean, right down to, you know, the LAN, uh, wireless sound, uh, onboard sound was absolutely uh, fantastic for onboard sound. Like I say, performance absolutely spot on as we saw. And, but you know, the, really the big thing was everything worked really, really well. And it was very, very nice to work with. And as you can see, it uh, looks great in the case, even with a giant, you know, air cooler on it, you can still see a little of the yellow peeking around the corners. Now to get uh, the details and final conclusion, I'm going to say definitely click on the link below and go over to the full review, get a look at the BIOS, get a look at the included software. Now also you're going to see that the uh, MSI Empower Max is taking home a High Tech Legion Gold Award, not an Editor's Choice Award. It does have a couple little flaky things that aren't going to matter to very many people, but we did have to knock it down a notch. But uh, at the same time, it's going to be the board of choice for a lot of people, myself included. Uh, this is definitely moving into my own rig right after benchmarking is over. Absolutely phenomenal board. So head on over to the full review and find out why.